Oh, this one. I forgot to put the light on my face. So. Okay, so the bottom of the, the bottomless pit uh, and yeah. wanting to finish the suffering and why I and also why I don't I'm not really into reading more books and uh, am I enlightened? Well, I'll go with the am I enlightened? No, no, I'm not enlightened. Uh, the, 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 uh, there is, there is classically, uh, at, uh, at, at the first level of enlightenment, there is classically what's called the death of the ego. The death of the ego is when suddenly a huge terror arises, a huge terror arises that if I, if I experience this terror, I will not have an ego at the other, on the other side. And it's known like this is, this is a final death. And the advice that was given to me by my teacher, Dr. Hawkins, was at that point, it's safe to go through. When you finally, you know, and I, I experienced the gate once in my early spiritual journey, and I refused it uh, because I had the thought. I was with two other people, it was very early in my journey, and I had the thought I didn't want to cry in front of the two because the terror came up. And so I, I latched onto that thought and the gateway shut immediately. Uh, so I wait for the next opportunity when that terror, you know, like, oh, if I go through this, because it's like I, I choose enlightenment, so it will come up at some point. Uh, it will come up again. And then I must go through that. And that is the burning off of the ego. There's like a terror that you're going to lose your identity and it will never come back. In the, in the, uh, and as you go through that, that's... Um, that is, uh, and then suddenly one is cast, you know, this habitual identification of experience that there is an experience of separation exists. While you have an ego, the level of separation that you experience, I'm a body, I'm my thoughts, depends on how much spiritual work you've done. But at that time, there is nothing. I mean, I remember Hawkins saying, people were speaking to the body, and it took him a while before he realized that people thought he was the body sitting there in the room. He wasn't, he wasn't that thing any longer. There was no identification that that body was him or that location was him. So that's a totally different level. I'm not, I'm not enlightened. Um, the, thing, um, thing, uh, the thing with, you know, I'm not interested in any more books, really not. I mean, I will, like, if I have to learn something, like if I got bought a new car, and I had to know what that button was, I would flip through the manual. But in terms of more spiritual knowledge, more therapeutic knowledge, more techniques, you know, is there a new tapping my head and tap dancing technique? <laughs> <laughs> Book, that's out, you know, and everyone's, ta everyone's telling me, this new tap dancing technique is really good, like you should read the book, you know, will I be going out <laughs> and, buy and buying the book? No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested. I mean, I'm very happy for you. You've got that book, and feel free to to, to read it and apply it. But no, in fact, what I teach in this group are, is a, you know, I, in terms of refreshing myself with Hawkins material. Um, uh, so Hawkins calibrated um, uh, through my own spiritual experience. I know he's a real teacher. I met him. And I've had, uh, and, I, and, and I've had him, I know lots of people have calibrated him, and he, he is of the highest, he's at the highest level of enlightenment. So not even the first level of enlightenment. So his works, why do I read them, even if I've read them or listened to them, even if I've heard them thousands of times, the same thing, thousands of times before, is because it's at the level of high enlightenment. And that's the only thing I'm interested in. I'm not interested in new knowledge, I'm not interested in new techniques. Not really, uh, unless something came through muscle testing. But um, so, and this thing of feeling the feelings and cancelling my beliefs, I don't need a better, you know, it's like, it's like, I know that is enough in and of itself for enlightenment. So to learn, at a certain level, you're releasing, when you get to this place of one pointedness of mind, which is the final stage. It's like you're willing to surrender absolutely everything now and you're thinking and needing to learn something new and being in your head, uh, you know, and even your addiction to going back to your thoughts. Because one-pointedness is like 
you're not even going to give them the energy to even start to get up. And you, there's a ferocious, and it's a spiritual intent. It comes like a spiritual inspiration to burn off the last layer of the ego. When that comes and that dissolving of the last uh, ego goes, and then the final fear arises, you're waiting for the final fear to arise, and then for the final dissolution of that ego, and then you're catapulted into another dimension, i.e. Uh, enlightenment, <coughs> meaning you're no longer experiencing yourself as being the body and the thoughts. You're, you become much more non-local and non-dual, is your experience. Having said that, you know, I should say, what about the negative sides? Because uh, I don't normally like to say the negative side because poor spiritual students, uh, you know, they, they have a tough time of it is. And if they know the, the, down, the negative side, I, I feel, but, you know, I'll say it anyway, but, I, I, you know, I, I don't really like to say it. Uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, like on enlightenment, on enlightenment, there is, you know, there is, a, through muscle testing, there's a 50% chance that the, the spirit may not redock into the body. You may just flip off into the next dimension. Yeah, yeah. Because your attachment to being sticking around in the body and the story and this drama of this yeah. world of duality, may, it may not, you know, some enlightened teachers remain in their non-dual states and teach or just sit around and people just sit at their feet. Some of the, you know, sometimes it might be, and for me that's not a bad, you know, but. To other people, it might seem like, oh, that's the reward, that I'm no longer here, I'm in a state of constant bliss in another realm. So, you know, there's stuff like that. Also, if you stick around, enlightenment, Buddha said the only way of stopping the reincarnating will and the end of suffering is enlightenment. That's it. That's the only way. I agree with them. Why? Like, even if you, I mean, I can be in the observer state, a lot of people here can be in the observer state. When you're no longer identified that your body and your and the story and everything happening in this world, you are actually experiencing something very close to enlightenment because you're beyond the world of karma of what happens to the body and all the dramas that happen and you're staying in a constant state of, of peace around that. Enlightenment is a very solid going into that at a, at a deeper level. So um, if you do stick around but even at enlightenment you should be in very profound states most of the time but tests do come up. So even for an enlightened person, if they stick around in this realm, there can be further tests, even at the level of enlightenment. So that's the, so I, I put out the ugly side uh, as well. Um, but you should be mostly constantly in a very, very good state with the occasional attack. Um, and, uh, okay, so the endless pit. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, until you get to the levels of enlightenment, the ego is still there. Until you get to that death of that ego, there is, there is going to be, you're going to be uh, challenges. And it can seem like you're doing a lot of spiritual work. And it can seem sometimes like there's some kind of endless pit there. So, uh, and in fact, because the ego has not been, you've not gone to the first level of enlightenment, I mean, the ego does have quite a fair amount of reserves left in it. Even, but as you get towards enlightenment, your state of grace and bliss and flow states should be very regular, with occasional karmic unloadings, uh, which will require yeah, a little or a lot of processing. But then you should return back to those states for a while. Uh, but then sometimes you might feel disheartened when you see a huge tranche of the ego and you can see it's still a bottomless thing <coughs> going on. That, um, do I feel, I mean, I don't feel like, you know, I'm not enlightened, but I don't feel like there's a bottomless pit. But I can definitely be hit by huge chunks of karma uh, for periods of time, and it can be a lot of work. Uh, uh, but, you know, I, I know there is, and while the ego is still energized, the books, okay, I did want us to talk about this. Like, Hawkins stuff is at a very high vibration, and I seek enlightenment. You know, like most, you know, 99% of the books out there um, are calibrating, like high spiritual books calibrating the 500s. Most of the self-help books are calibrating below 500. You know, something like, uh, something like, 
and a lot of the stuff out there is below 200. I mean, most people are students, but you know, in terms of like, when you get to enlightenment, I mean, getting more knowledge, who needs more knowledge? You're trying, I mean, it's very, very simple. You're just being out of your thinking in the now. Uh, do I need to read another book on that? Uh, you know, sitting with the feelings. Do I need to read another book on how to sit with my feelings? Or a different way. Maybe there's a faster way to process feelings. But, you know, okay. Uh, now, I'm not saying this. At diff when students are at different levels of consciousness, um, it can be appropriate for them to be choosing techniques which are helpful to them. Um, I am not saying that, you know, if you, you might find wherever you are on your journey that there is a technique which is a lot faster than feel the feelings and the observer for you at this point in your journey. But for me, you know, uh, once, you know, I've been doing the observer and feel the feelings now, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years. It's because then it's like, I know that there's not going to be an intellectual construct that's going to be faster to not engaging in thought and just allowing the experience of feelings. Like even tapping my things and remembering to tap a few points mm -hmm. is like a process. Like trying to remember or do something mm -hmm. or, or all of this is like there is some engagement in there. So for me it's like, well, you know, let me just allow it and experience it or let me just not identify with the thought and be in the observer. It's very immediate. So I'm not interested in another book, which might be helpful to a student, but you know, I have, I have zero interest. I mean, I want just things, for me, it's like I want enlightenment <coughs> only. I want a teacher who's at the level of enlightenment. And even if he's saying the same thing over and over again, that, because he's at the highest level of truth. Like for me, I only want things at the highest level of truth. And everything else, the, the author of a book is going to write at their level of spiritual consciousness. So it's like, okay, Hawkins, you know, you know, at the highest level, this guy, oh, he's of unconditional love, it's really nice, but I, I'm not interested. Someone who's going to give a long technique with tapping, learning 700 points that I need to tap in my body and do a tap dance at the same time. <laughs> it's like, I'm sure it's good for a lot of people, but I'm not, I don't want to read that book and then learn the process of doing that thing for, my, for myself. I'm not saying it might not be valuable for uh, people. Uh, so, to pursue enlightenment, don't be discouraged by the bottomless pit. If you seek enlightenment, don't be discouraged by the bottomless pit, because there is, finally, your, your intention is to get to the last gateway and to go through the last gateway. Okay, until then, the ego will ferociously try and dissuade you and make you feel hopeless, but don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs>